a dog is chasing you and you started to run. When you saw the dog, your eyes, which is one of the sensory receptor, saw the dog, give the sensory input to the integration center or the central nervous system, CNS. CNS will start to integrate the problem, the situation, and put out the stimulus to the motor output for what you should do. So this is what it is called as coordination, where the sensory and the effector coordinate with each other to do something. In coordination involve three neurons. The first one is the sensory neuron. Sensory neuron sense any stimulus from the outside environment and send the impulse to the second neuron. That is the interneuron in the integration center. Then in the integration center where the processes of uh, integration will happen and then the output will be sent to the motor neuron where the motor neuron will be connected to the effector, for example, a muscle cell here. So it involves three neurons. This is the structure of neuron where you should have learned in the uh, first chapter in semester one. A neuron consists of cell body that have a nucleus, dendrite that are protruded out from the cell body, axon, long axon, and the axon we have myelin sheath, and in between the myelin sheath is the node of Ranvier, and we also have axon terminals. Oh, and then finally we also have uh, axon terminus is also known as synapse. This is uh, an, a neuron without myelin sheath and this is a neuron with myelin sheath. This is the three neurons that involve in uh, the coordination. The first one, the sensory neuron, where the cell body is in the middle part of the neuron. The second one is association neuron or interneuron, where it mostly do not have myelin sheath on the axon. And finally, we have motor neuron that consists of myelin sheath. In this video, we will explain the formation of resting and action potential in the neuron for it to be able to transmit impulse. Before that, let's look at membrane potential. Membrane potential basically just to show you how the inside of the cell, inside of the axon, have a different charge compared to the outside environment. In this uh, picture, in this diagram, shows how inside of the cell, inside of the axon, is more negatively charged compared to the outside environment that is more positively charged. And impulse transmission involves two major phases, resting potential and action potential. During resting potential, axon do not conduct any impulse due to the absence of stimulus. So, the resting potential for non-stimulated axon membrane, the membrane of the axon that do not receive any stimulus, will remain negative 70 mV. And the resting potential can be maintained by the facilitated diffusion of ion channel, sodium potassium pump, and the inability of large organic anion to pass through the neuron membrane. Action potential basically is the change of membrane potential of neuron membrane or the axon during the passage of impulse. When the impulse reach the axon, the membrane potential in the axon start to uh, change. These changes will uh, bring along the stimulus along the axon. When neuron is stimulated, impulse is generated along the axon. 
the polarity of the axon is reversed. The exoplasm or the cytoplasm inside the axon become more positively charged and the extracellular, the envir outside environment, become more negatively charged. This is our neuron. When the stimulus is detected by the dendrite, the stimulus will be sent to the axon. Then the impulse will be transferred along the axon until the axon terminal or to the synapse. Transmission of impulse along the axon will involve action potential. In action potential, there are five stages. And in action potential, involve voltage-gated sodium ion channel and also voltage-gated potassium ion channel. The first stage is the resting state. The resting state basically is when the membrane is in resting potential, where we have a more positively charged outside and negatively charged inside of the axon. The voltage gated sodium ion channel and also the voltage gated of potassium ion channels are close as you can see in the picture here. And the sodium, ion, sodium potassium pump and ungated ion channels are the one that maintain the resting potential as, uh, as I told you just now. And the membrane potential stay at negative 70 millivolt. As you can see in the uh, graph here, resting potential is when the membrane potential is in negative 70 millivolt. The second stage is depolarization. This happens when the stimulus present at the axon. The stimulus will trigger some of the voltage-gated sodium ion channel to open, as you can see in the picture here. This causes the sodium ion to diffuse into the exoplasm down concentration gradient. When the sodium ion diffuse into the exoplasm causing depolarization where the membrane potential of the axon become more positive as positively charged ion diffuse into. The depolarization keep on happening until the axon reach threshold potential. Once the axon reach threshold level, it will trigger action potential. Usually in axon, the threshold level is negative 55 millivolt. Once the threshold level is reached, this will lead to the third phase that is rising phase of the action potential. This happen when more voltage gated sodium ion channel are open. When these gated ion channel are open, causing influx of sodium ion into the axon. This will cause a further depolarization, causing the inside of the axon membrane to become more positive because sodium ion keep on entering the cell. Action potential is generated and impulse can be transmitted. Action potential is when the axon membrane reach positive 35 millivolt. And during this phase, the voltage gated potassium ion channel remain closed. Once the membrane potential of the axon reach positive 35 millivolt, most of the voltage gated sodium ion channel will be closed and the voltage gated potassium ion channel will open. Once the voltage gated of potassium ion channel open, causing efflux of the potassium ion out from the axon. When the potassium ion out of the axon, this will cause repolarization. Repolarization where the inside of the axon become more negative. 
and then the final stage is undershoot as you can see in the di in the graph here where at stage 5 the membrane potential drop below the resting potential that is undershoot this happened because the sum voltage catered potassium ion channel remain open because their gate uh, slowly close this causes more potassium ion to keep on uh, exiting even though they reach the membrane potential but the potassium ion keep on exiting causing undershoot where the membrane potential become more negative than negative 70 millivolt and the resting potential can be re-established after the undershoot by the sodium potassium pump and facilitated diffusion of ungated ion channels. So this is the five stage of action potential involving voltage gated sodium ion channel and also voltage gated potassium ion channel. And impulse are transmitted along the axon in a wave-like character. Depolarization occur at one part of the axon will cause depolarization at the next part of the axon. After this, after the first part, send the impulse to the second part. It will start to repolarize back. And this will keep on happening until the impulse reach the axon terminal. You can see in the picture here how the impulse is transmitted along the axon. Instead of the action potential happen all of the, on, on, on the axon, it will happen, the action potential will happen part by part. until the transmission reach the synapse. And for myelinated axon, axon that have myelin sheath, the transmission of impulse will happen much faster because the action potential will only take place at the node of Ranvier and the impulse can be transmitted directly to the next node of Ranvier compared to the axon to the neuron or axon that do not have myelin sheath where the action potential will happen along the neuron.